Hey, so I write this science fiction fantasy. This trilogy is called Bones of Starlight. Um, it's so good. It's really good. Oh, thanks. Yeah, um, the first two books are at the library, and the third is on its way there. But um, so I just I've been getting some world news uh, from the Hugo nominating body and World Science Fiction Fantasy Convention, which is where um, science fiction gets the Hugo Awards, which happen yearly, and you know, it's been, it's our big uh, genre awarding body, and uh, the Hugo Awards were in China last year, and there's a big controversy about, um, you know, Chinese politics and the way the voting went, and how the nominations happened last year, and how that affects, you know, the history of literature, and how that might affect literature into the next year, because of I, I definitely supported the China World Con bid because um, it was the first one to be hosted in Asia since I got involved in 2015. And um, I support, you know, World Con happening outside of the United States where it happens more often um, because it's supposed to you know, represent science fiction fantasy from the entire world, um, which it does to a great extent and has its own uh, independent organization, which is all volunteer run. Um, and they put on an amazing convention every year that happens in a different place every year. Uh, next year it's in Glasgow, Scotland. Um, and the year after that, it's coming to Seattle. It's coming to Seattle in 2025. So what a year for science fiction and for Seattle it's gonna be. Um, and so, uh, you know, it's really interesting to be hearing about the controversy. There was a big controversy the year I joined the World Science Fiction Fantasy Convention in 2015 when it was in Washington for the first time in Spokane. Um, the sad puppies uh, emerged, and they were people who uh, preferred science fiction fantasy to be white and male. And they formed a voting block to affect the outcome, and you know there was a, a side um, a side awards to sort of compensate for that, for you know the fact that science fiction is much more diverse than that voting block would allow. And so, you know, the history of literature is continually evolving, and we're uh, it's and it's participatory. People can join in. They can join in just to vote. They can join in to attend. And actually, in 2015, when they came to Washington, we uh, broke a record for attendance. Yeah. So that, was, that was the biggest attending uh, population in the history of Worldcon, so I was really stoked about that. I volunteered that year, and I've been paneling there and presenting there since then. And uh, so this is, um, I finished the third novel of the trilogy in time to uh, nominate it last year. And I expect that I'm somewhere in the pool of uh, single vote nominations, but you know, I believe in my work enough to at least place it in the uh, extra, extra, extra long list of the annals of history. And so it may or may not be there in this disputed set of uh, awards. Um, but no, a democracy behavior last year. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's great to just have finished a book another book. Um, so I'm just actually going to read from my Hugo-nominated work. <laughs> um, and this trilogy has a lot of sort of the intricacies of relating between different peoples. Um, it's a space opera, which means it's sort of macrocosmic and interplanetary alternate universe space opera. And so this is just a little one of those sections that is about, you know, someone going to encounter people who may not entirely be friendly, but who are willing to try to connect in a time, in a really tense time. Rosy Glow audially translated speech that she could apparently understand with character tones that carried eerie clarity of individuality for something coming from a completely different vibrational language pattern. You are brave. 
coming to us here. Human beings are fragile without your machines of destruction, which have caused us extreme sorrow. Here and now, we are giving you a better chance not to suffer likewise when the decision rests in our moment. We are going to learn about you. So Lay stepped out from the edge of a group to address them. I also wish to learn in order to know what must be done. Announce yourself by fitting your goal, not speaking your title, she remembered from a dim motherly lesson. We will have you introduce yourself according to our custom. Miss Vall will be the one to teach you about matching forces. They translated rosy glow, selecting the ungendered pronoun not of the dragon it said, will bring you to a place of preparation. Derringer looked down at himself as he stepped forward. Not you, only her. The already speaking indicated Soleil with their pointed chin. The rest of you may wait in a place where nourishment will be provided. Everyone regarded Soleil, and she looked back at them gravely as she separated herself further from the group by a couple steps. The translator will accompany her. Go now. As she moved to follow Miss Well, the princess ascendant looked back over her shoulder at each of her traveling group, saying nothing as she disappeared. Rosy Glow bobbed a courtesy and followed them away humming. In a simple stone chamber, the three faced each other and began the instruction. Rosy Glow's interpreted voice of the Orany Mistfall was resonant, lucid, and rolling. Our formal greeting is known as matching forces. Give it your full might and no less, not for overpowering the other, but to transmit your truth. This brings us to a place of honesty. Our senses are honed for that, if yours are not. Along the spiral, where you will make your introductions, you may place your back to a wall or a precipice. If your intent is to deceive, if you are perceived as being less than completely honest, one may choose to crush you or toss you. We will not suffer that foolishness. You won't be able to overpower a single one of us. Give us your real force and we will match forces. As many of us as you can greet until you are exhausted will be those of us you may address at a subsequent time. Miss Fall coached Soleil on the physical application until she could confidently and correctly co-initiate. From everything she gleaned, avarice was the foremost human quality they'd encountered. Through a simmering shame, the princess ascendant aimed to display a different side of humanity, to state through action that the peoples of the pangalactic imperium were greater than a 